right, this next one I picked up just out of curiosity and I did pick it up uh, in a blind buy and I was hoping that it would be quite similar to the original that I've got because this is a flanker. It's a flanker from 2004 and is a flanker of the one of my favorite cheapy fragrances, which is Jaipur uh, by Boucheron. And I've got the Eau de Parfum of that and I've had it for a while and it's quite strong. It's an enormously complicated and fantastic scent and I've probably got about 10 mils left in my 100 mil bottle so I kind of use it from time to time but not as often as I used to so I picked up this flanker but it's a flanker of the flanker because this is Jaipur Om Eau de Toilette Fraîcheur Epice. Now, I think there is a fraîcheur or a fresh version of this, but this is fraîcheur epice, which is a fresh spicy. And the funny thing is, there's no spice in it. There's no, like it's fresh. It's a fresher take on the Jaipur DNA, but there's no spice in it. Mm. When I originally got it and I tried it out and I tried it out briefly and I thought, oh yeah, it's quite fresh in the opening, but then it kind of just dries down to regular Jaipur. Whatever, I don't mind. And it's a lighter version than the Eau de Parfum, but I did wear it subsequently a few more times and especially more recently I, I tried it on during the springtime and I think that it's more appropriate in the springtime because the, when I got it it was winter and I tried it out in the springtime a little bit more warmer yes it is a beautiful springtime fragrance it opens up with a little bit more freshness there's like orange and bergamot in here very strong atomizer and it doesn't need to have one orange and bergamot but they're not uh citric they're not zesty they're fruity they're fruity and they're almost sweet a youthful sweetness you know they're not ripe yet but they're still sweet enough to eat and you're getting that you're getting that coriander mixed with peony already which is in the mids and it's supposed to have cinnamon and amber in the base and they're kind of there a little bit but uh they won't come until way later in the piece and of course on a tester strip the top notes seem to hang around quite a lot more than they do on your skin which tends to eat them up well my skin tends to eat them up let's move on to another one now this next one was released in 2019 2019 and that's when i heard about it and that's i think i got it in 2020 it was because I bought into the hype. I was watching a lot of fragrance review videos in 2020 because hell, I was watching a lot of videos in 2020 because there was nothing else to do. We were confined to our living quarters for all the day and night. And so I got caught up in the hype and did some online shopping and ended up grabbing me a bottle of this. And I was, I did approach it with trepidation because, you know, when when larger channels sort of hype up a fragrance, you, 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 you hear them talk about it and you, you you, you kind of build up your expectations and then when you actually get it it's it's not as good as as what you thought it would be or what it doesn't match the level of excitement that the reviewer was presenting the fragrance with but this one let me down it let me down but because i had to open it and spray it and let some air into it and let it sort of develop and macerate a little bit and when it did i came back to it and i wore it again and i wore it in many seasons i wore it during the cold at night and it worked so beautifully and so i continue to come back to it and this one is by asaro it's a flanker and it's called ginger lover now i'm pretty sure that i put this on a cheapies list at some point because it used to be like 40 50 bucks a bottle but uh, it's been discontinued now and i don't see this anywhere it's damn hard to find where i am anyway and looking sort of internationally i think there's a few bottles but they have gone up in price where i am right now i think i saw it for last time i saw it for around 90 bucks on the gray market and i'd still buy this for 90 bucks because i think it's it's just it is that good yesterday or the day before i looked it up someone was trying to sell it for 180 now you're getting a little bit crazy when you try and sell a fragrance that is this young and has no heritage for that much money that used to retail for you know 40 bucks used to retail for 40 bucks it's not like it's not like for example m7 which used to sell for 20 to 40 bucks a bottle and many people used it for many years and then it got discontinued and it got discontinued and it was still reasonable and then it shot up in price and you understand that because people may have been using that collecting memories whilst wearing Wearing that fragrance so they've got a lot of scent memories tied to it or it's their signature scent or something like that this hasn't been around long enough for enough people to have had all those experiences wearing this as a signature scent so i don't think the enormous price tag is justified and anyway i never see those ones sell not the ridiculously priced ones mm. 
But anyway, back to the fragrance itself. This is ginger, ginger, lime, and vetiver. Very simple sort of composition. And it doesn't stray too far from there. But the, the amazing thing about it is, I always say it's like a candied sort of sugared, candied sort of ginger. And I'm not a, a big fan of sweet scents, but you add that sweetness to ginger and the way they've done it, it's just amazing. It's not effervescent at all. It's like almost deep and resinous and sweet. And, and, and the lime really has like, it's in the background with the vetiver because vetiver and lime work really well together. What they do here to the ginger, to this candy ginger is bring forth almost like the citric element of the ginger out of the fragrance itself. So it's almost like it's fresh but it's warm at the same time it's like juxtaposed and that's why you know you can wear this in heat and you can wear this in cold it's really a signature scent kind of thing very designerish but the best kind of designerish you know one that's instantly likable that's designer instantly likable that's what it should aim to do that's what they should aim to do anyway catch you with the top notes and then keep you coming back with sort of wafts of its sillage as it's drying down now this last one i might get into a little bit of trouble with the og heads um who love this fragrance i also used to love the original fragrance of this i loved it on other people you know i thought Okay, it's it's. I'm talking about Isimiyake, talking about Lodice. I smelled that on so many people in the 90s when it got released. I was like, ooh, that smells great. I'm going to grab it for one summer. So I bought the big bottle and uh, I had it and I wore it throughout the summer. I even wore it through winter as well um, because back then I didn't have like a, maybe I had like around a dozen fragrances back when I was like getting out of high school and uni. During the summer, I wore this and on me, I just didn't want it on me. And I think it was the yuzu that actually put me off because the yuzu did something either with my skin chemistry or just that I wasn't a big fan of it sitting that close to me. I do remember that Lodice was a huge projection bomb. I don't know how it is now, but it used to be a very, very potent performer back in the 90s when I had the bottle then. I did actually enjoy smelling it on other people other than me that were around me. It smelled great in the sillage. And when it dried down eventually to the deep dry down, it, it smelled great as well. But just that yuzu, just right me the wrong way. So I was very pleased when I actually chanced across a really cheap bottle of this new version. And I say new, but I think this was actually released in 2015. It was one of the many millions of flankers from the Lodice line. And it is this one here. This is Lodice uh, Port Homme Fresh, just simply fresh. And what they've done here is toned down the, first of all, they've toned down the florals in the mids and they've replaced it with things like mate tea, uh, which gives it sort of like a more earthiness, lavender and some pink pepper for some spice and some zing. But the big thing they've done is they've removed the yuzu and they've replaced it with a ton of grapefruit. Oh of grapefruit rind, bitter, almost citric, bitter grapefruit rind and rosemary, but not the kind that you would, you know, cook lamb with, almost like the rosemary, rosemary blossoms or something like that. Of course, bergamot mint in here as well. This potent lasts for quite a while on me. When I wear this in the summertime, I wear it during the day. I can smell it all the way through to the night. It's almost like a liqueur when it came out then. And this is a 100 ml bottle and I have gone through quite a bit of it so far. I have to say I did pick that up at an absolute steal. I think it may have been like 15 bucks or something like that. Sometimes you just gotta keep your eyes open. Now, if you look in the note listing in Fragrantica, one of the top notes in this fragrance is called Sea Buckthorn, Sea Buckthorn. And if you don't know what that is, they're like little berries. They're like little orange berries and they come in like a cluster. And when I was in China, Last time I was in China, we went to a special restaurant that had a whole bunch of like organic items on their menu. One of the things that they were famous for was sea buckthorn. And they had this restaurant chain had sea buckthorn farms, I guess, or orchards. And they harvested those and they made sea buckthorn juice. And I thought, well, if you're getting the juice fresh from your own farms, then I want to taste it. And I've never tasted sea buckthorn juice. So we ordered and it was delicious. And I can kind of smell it in there which is weird but um I, I i had multiple servings of that juice i still remember it i took photos of it i wanted i went and did research on what the hell is this particular fruit that i've never heard of and it's like almost like a orangey mandarin kind of thing but more of a berry quality to it mm. 
Now, of course, if you've never smelled that, then you probably won't pick it up and you might just think that it's the bergamot or some oranges or some other citruses, but it's not. Do get that earthiness from the mate. It's nice, uh, but majorly minty and, uh, and grapefruity, which is really nice in the summertime. So that's my seven cents that uh, I think that, and, and look, because that whole low Dissé line has had like 10 million flankers, it's hard to keep up and not all of them are going to be super expensive expensive even though some of them might be very rare and discontinued they're actually quite cheap not all of them are great this one i can vouch for and say it is if you wore the original in the 90s uh, which means that maybe you're around my age or older this is a very good way to have almost the same vibe but on a more mature level so that you are wearing something that is more age appropriate and that is this it's an age appropriate freshie and i think it's still kind of easy to find and very very reasonable in its pricing so let's come back to the first one and see how globe Rochas globe has dried down now i smell leather now i smell leather and fur leather and fur it's like a green leather and around it there's some sandalwood next was a brazil dream for him let's check out how that's dried down cinnamon patchouli and cardamom still cinnamon patchouli and cardamom it's a good mix and there's like some some pepperiness still in there next one was carven ohm <sighs> cinnamon and nutmeg cinnamon nutmeg sandalwood and vanilla what a combo <sighs> Love it, absolutely. It's phenomenally good. And the next one was Biblos Fusion. Like an aquatic, oody version, fresher version of Encre Noir by Lalique. It's like, it, it smells like the color. It smells like the color of the juice itself. It smells like this color, if that's a, if that's a, that's any help. The next one was the Jaipur, Freshure Apice. And I totally smell a whole bunch of coriander seeds now. And a very, it's a very ambery cinnamon. It's like, it's like a, it's like a lemony cinnamon, but with soapy facets to it. This is, is like really, really nice. I've, I've actually, this has been a slow burn. I wasn't too impressed with it originally, but man, that is good. Really good. Wow. Boucheron doesn't disappoint. You know, Bouchon doesn't disappoint. Originally got introduced to the house in the 90s when uh, my mom had a bottle of the original Jaipur de Bouchon for women. And then I got the Jaipur for men, which was really good, maybe about 15 years ago, maybe longer. <laughs> and uh, I also got Boucheron Pour Homme, which I really like, and I've almost finished that bottle as well. And this, fantastic. So the next one, Ginger Lover, hasn't changed gotten better actually the sweetness has sort of toned itself down the ginger is a little drier and uh, the lime is a little bit more prominent and the vetiver itself isn't like the earthy sort of smoky kind of vetiver it's a it's more like that grassy citric sort of vetiver or it just could be that it's mixed together with the lime that's giving it that vibe but um that's also really nice and last but not least is the isamiyake fresh yeah Ooh. Bitter, bitter grapefruit. The, the mint itself isn't sweet either. It's minty without being sweet. I guess that's mixing with the mixing with the grapefruit. And there's vetiver in the base here as well. Again, a very clean vetiver, very sort of almost earthy kind of vetiver, but uh, not the smoky facets of vetiver. This is like not the grassy, more towards the, the stem or the bottom bit of the vetiver, but without the smoky element, or either that's being subdued by the grapefruit that is very, very prominent in here. And there you have it. If you can find these seven fragrances, that's the first challenge because they're quite rare. Even though they're discontinued, even though fragrances do get discontinued, then they're, they're not hard to find, but these are discontinued and rare. I don't see them come up very often. And when they do, they're usually reasonably priced. I'm betting that they're still going to be in comparison to some of their counterparts that have been discontinued. So there you have it. That's uh, seven rare and hard to find discontinued fragrances that are still relatively kind of affordable. Let's say kind of. Hmm. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed doing that and smelling all these fragrances again. And as always, thanks for watching.